This film is about a problem which may threaten our lives in the next 20 years. Statistics say that the world is losing the ability to feed its growing populations. If nothing is done, by the year 1980, the nations of Asia, Africa, and Latin America may see the beginnings of widespread famine. For the next 40 minutes, we are going to move our camera about the Earth to show you images which illustrate the problem. You will see scenes from three continents. The details, the faces will differ, but each is a part of the same story happening everywhere. It has taken from the dawn of time until today for the Earth to produce a total of three billion people. From now until the end of the century, that total will double. people are added to the population every second. From the time I say go until the end of this film, 5,000 more people will be added to the earth. What you're going to see is happening now. Go. <laughs> These are some of the people who may face famine within the next 20 years. Our search for images begins. This man, is a wandering motion picture impresario. He travels from village to village every year at festival time. This is his theater. This is his orchestra. And this is his audience. Here for a few moments, they can drive a racing car, own a transistor radio, play an electric guitar, wear a tailored suit, fly a jet around the world, wear a self-winding wristwatch. These children, at a time when the world for each person is not growing enough food, look beyond the images in this dark box and begin to dream of a better life. Their dreams are a force that can change the world. My name is Edmund, and these are my relatives. This is my grandmother. How do you do, madam? Jambo. 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 This is my mother. Jambo. This is the man who makes funny noise. Uh, let me hear you play your horn, sir. Uh, yeah, go, 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 go. Right now we are waiting for rain 
So we cannot grow maize without rain. And for the reason, we, the, the usual food is uh, millet and cassava. And that you can see my sister there is grinding. Yes, my sister. I'm grinding some, some cassava flour. You can see here it is. And the, the small boy there seems to seems to have eaten too much porridge. It's only that he doesn't get enough milk. You know, there is no cow to give milk for the boy to drink. And by then, the stomach cannot be good. We don't buy milk because we, we don't have enough money to buy it. They would like to sing a song for you. Do you like it? You start. Edmund, do they sing like this very often? Do they sing like this very often? Not very often. People like these have already begun to change the world. They've improved living conditions. They've eliminated much disease. Children born in this short time have had a better chance to live. But their success has created a new problem. Of all the people alive today, over one half are under 19 years of age. These people will soon have families. If each new family has only one child, the world's population will explode. There will be over a billion more people on Earth. And these billion new people, like their parents, will expect to live better. This is a grain shipment from another country. Today, the cities of three continents depend upon this food to live. This grain costs money. As long as money is spent to feed these people, it cannot be spent to develop their country. Here's an image. It is a steel mill that will never be built. Its presence hangs over the city like a dream. Nothing remains but the smoke of the evening meal. After the dream, the nightmare. Everywhere populations are growing. Everywhere more food is needed. Today only a few countries supply the food most nations need. It may only be a matter of time before the last ship arrives and the food from abroad runs out. As long as a nation depends upon these ships for food, its development may slow down. And if these ships stop coming, there may be famine. Sixty percent of the nations of Africa, Asia, and Latin America are farmers. Why don't they grow more food? to feed itself. It's from farms like these that most of the food must come. Now, let's play a game. This is Pauline, wife of Luca. 
for the next minute or so, try to see if you would grow more food. Were you Luca? Every week on marketing day, your wife walks to the local market. There are bigger markets farther away. The roads are good, and there's a bus. But there's no way of knowing before you get to the bigger markets what the price will be. The bus is a needless risk of precious cash. So you send your wife to the nearby market. You don't risk the cash. And everyone else has made the same decision as you. Here's an image. It unites all continents, all races, all of humanity. One day out of every week, in every part of the world, a market takes place, like a ritual, the reenactment of the birth of civilization. But here the market goes on like a ritual that has lost its purpose. There are many sellers, few buyers. Everyone waits. Everyone sells. And almost everyone sells the same thing. Now what would you do? It's too risky to go to the farther markets, and nearby there are few buyers. Would you grow more food? Let's ask Luca. I can grow anything I want on my land. I can grow fruits and vegetables of all kinds. It's a place to take them that's lacking. We have no market. My brother tried planting pineapples, almost a hundred stems, but no one would buy. So I only grow enough food for my family. Why grow more food when there's no way to sell it? The world may starve. Luca won't. About 300 miles to the southeast is the farm of Ingrichi. Like Luca, he only grows enough to feed his family. But while Luca can grow all the food he needs, Ingrichi is hit every two or three years by drought. He says that uh, the, the cob is completely bad because of drought. And he asks me also to see it. And uh, here yeah, you can see looking. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's okay to you, you, you. It is completely as far as this is. It's okay to you, you are. Completely, completely. And uh, it, it has no good results. We asked Ingrichi if he ever tried to grow more food. He said he would have to mortgage his farm to get the money to grow more. And if you were hit by a drought like this one, he would not only lose his crop, but his farm as well. He will not take that chance. There is a stream at the bottom of the hill a half a mile away. A pump might solve Ingrichi's problem, but he cannot afford one. So he says, I just watch the river flow and the corn wither. The world needs more food. The farmer is not growing it. The risks are too great. How many bags of grain do you need for your family? About 10 bags. How many are in your family? About 20. Why do you never say an exact number? It's a traditional belief. If we say an exact number, somebody may die. How many bags will you get from this crop? Just one. The joke's on us. We may starve. The farmer accepts his fate. He has nothing to gain, everything to lose. Why should he grow more? He is rational. Not far from Ingrichi, we found these images. Last night, 
Every evening in a thatched hut, three young Africans copy the words from a record player. this way for over 2,000 years. They are part of a traditional culture. It has been said that the traditional farmer, given the opportunity to change, would not. You're in a school of traditional dance. These girls are learning Bharatanatyam. They've been studying only a short time. They must master the mechanics of over 80 basic postures. To do this, they must work for at least eight years. They go as far as they can toward their goal, the limits of their possibilities as dancers. Along with the gestures, these girls are learning three traditional values. Self-perfection, patience, and determination. Self-perfection, patience, and determination. A new rice was developed a few years ago. This new seed produced four times as much rice as the old seed and could be planted three times a year. Here was a chance to feed millions more people. It has been said that the traditional farmer, given the opportunity to grow more food, would not. He was thought to be lazy, unable to learn, unwilling to change. So in one small district, he was offered the new seed and put to the test. Here is an image. He is a hero of the space age. We found him at an agricultural test site. While men take off for the moon, these farmers and others like them are learning to develop the earth. In this test, the farmer was guaranteed a market and a profit. He learned to grow more. He was guaranteed water, fertilizer, pesticide, money at low interest. He learned to grow more. The farmer was given support he had never received before. He grew four times more rice than ever before. Tanadira, 
Today, most farmers are not getting the support they need to grow more food. So science is trying to find a more fertile seed that can be grown without any of the costly supplies. Seeds placed in this machine are exposed to gamma radiation. Gamma rays cause mutations in the seeds. Each mutation will produce a plant different in some way from every other. Only one mutation out of 10 million may be useful, but the search is so desperate to find that one mutation that all 10 million must be planted. The farmer has seen what science can do. He now knows he could live better, but he is not getting the opportunity. This knowledge has produced its own mutation. A new kind of man. He says, I mean, we are not sloppy farmers, you see. We have been struggling hard. We have been working hard. If I mean, this gentleman says there are certain limitations for us getting things in time, fertilizers on time, pesticides on time, and if those things are supplied on time, we will be able to do uh, much better. and if he does not get the fertilizer the whole crop is going to be spoiled and that would uh, mean we would run the risk of starvation is yaar somari solade naana kashtapada vaal theriva yaar somari solade ibu somari adha payina payidam porunu poi sai kai kudunra kalai porunu payi nandra ette da seyirde kashtapada porunu who said i am sloppy we are not sloppy we want to progress we want to give education to our children unless i work hard i can't send this boy to school and this boy has to be given some education is all these things will mean that i'll have to work harder and harder somebody nu solraangala anga somebody irundha ka ivula minnu konna ungala kana notave car like you kana notave better building than the one listen to this man the world must listen to him if it's to feed itself he speaks for 60% of the populations of asia africa and latin america science has shown him that it is possible to grow more food he has proven he will respond but he's not getting what he needs he is our one hope to stop famine and he is dissatisfied every month thousands of farmers stop trying to grow food and move to the city their departure makes a weak farm system even weaker These people too 
seek someone to listen. Now, instead of feeding others, it's the farmer who must be fed. Why do they come? What do they want? At the top of this slum, we found the son of a farmer who was also a poet. He was very nervous. It was the first time anyone had ever listened. I will buy you shoes and dresses, many jewels and precious stones. I will do all for you within my power. When you pass by in the street, everything smiles in flowers. The sun, the sky, the moon, in a delirium of love. Soon the day will come when you will be mine, only mine. I will be full of joy. I will make you a queen. I will give you a golden crown. I will have your teeth fixed. Perfect, white, a treasure. I will give you a silver necklace and a pearl ring. I will bring a lily from the field for you who adore me. What does the farmer want? It's very simple. The farmer wants what many other people already have. He wants the money to buy those things which in a modern world bring self-respect and pleasure. If he cannot earn that money on the farm, he may leave and go in search of it. This is a force that can develop a nation, or it will destroy it. Here is an image. It is desire. If we are to get the food we need, the farmer must get the life he wants. Properly farmed, this river valley could feed 25 million people. But before the farmer will settle this land and grow more food, he must be assured a better life here than he can find in the city. This agricultural experimental station is part of a project to give him that life. And these are some of the men in charge. They are part of a special drama, the development of agriculture. The idea is simple aproveitar o Rio São Francisco para irrigar essas áreas e, em seguida, trazer o homem para ocupá-las. Mas, o que aconteceria se nós trouxéssemos o homem sem os mínimos conhecimentos? Ele não sabe se as plantas vão crescer satisfatoriamente, se há mercado para os seus produtos. 
se o tamanho da fazenda ou do lote satisfaz plenamente a necessidade de sua família. O que, é que nós estaríamos formando? Estaríamos formando uma favela agrícola. E para que isso não aconteça, há necessidade, necessidade imperiosa de estudar, pesquisar e experimentar para que isso não ocorra. This is one of the trench we have dug over 26,000 square kilometers. How many trenches have you dug? At least we have to, to, to dug three for a square kilometer. We have to get sample from this trench to send to the lab. Para a determinação da classificação textural do solo. Então nós agitamos aqui um minuto cada amostra. Depois de cinco minutos de agitar, então pipetamos a 10 centímetros de profundidade, a primeira e coletamos limo mais argila. Depois de 5 horas, trabalho grande, não? então nós pipetamos, a, fazemos a segunda pipetagem a 5 centímetros de profundidade, coletamos argila. Então depois de 48 horas, 48 horas é que nós vamos dar o resultado total dessa análise. Isso que eu faço aqui há 4 anos, não? Quatro anos. Ah, nós do sol damos apenas uma ideia. Mas a gente tem que testar, ver o que é que dá. Será que batata dá? Será que tomate dá? Será que amendoim dá? Será que cebola dá? Etc. Né? Depois disso, temos que é, ver de cada cultura qual a variedade que produz melhor e mais resistente a pragas e doenças. Temos que ver a melhor quantidade de adubo que temos que pôr no solo. Temos que ver é, a melhor quantidade de água. Além disso, tudo isso nós estamos testando. Além disso, temos que ver a melhor época do plantio de cada cultura. Isso a gente tem que fazer cada mês um plantio para depois termos é, o que queremos, as respostas. Né? E uh, quanto tempo leva cada, cada teste desse? Ah, isso nunca se sabe, depende da cultura, né? É, desde o plantio até o tempo de colher. E você já tem uma ideia qual é a, a cultura que nasce melhor aqui? É, estamos quase certo que é amendoim. E quanto tempo levou para você descobrir isso? Ah, em torno de uns quatro anos, talvez. It takes time to develop agriculture. While there is still time, we must give the farmer what he needs. If we do not, the world may see the beginnings of widespread famine.